All right. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Angular Nation. I, I, well, I have to take a second because of all of our Summer of Emerging Tech series this summer, this might be the one I'm the most excited about. So I'm really freaking out tonight. Uh, and I'm very excited to have this particular group of guests because I love these people, but also I love what they're working on. And I'm like personally nerding out big time. So just take a deep breath. Very excited. Uh, I'm going to start with the, 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 the OG goat himself, the greatest of all time, Mr. Igor Minar. How are you doing, Igor? Happy Friday. Hi, happy Friday. We also have Peter Bacon Darwin. Pete. Hey, how's it how going? How the hell are you? Yeah, everything's good for me. Um, just bracing ourselves for the uh, onslaught of the, the heat that's coming into the UK in the next few days. Oh, I know. It's been crazy, crazy, crazy. So, <laughs> Eric, how are you doing? Um, so, th things are going good. Uh, it's been a little over a year since we launched uh, the web container stuff in last May. Um, we've been doing a lot of fun things. We've got some stuff coming up in the next quarter here that we're going to be launching. We've been working with Cloudflare on some stuff. Uh, we actually just announced BeatConf yesterday um, and Cloudflare, uh, you know, the Cloudflare workers folks are, you know, they're a community partner on the thing. So yeah, we're, I'm sure we're going to have some fun conversations here today talking about all this stuff. I'm so excited. I just have to say when it comes to Stack Blitz, every time I turn around, you guys have decided to do something that previously everyone thought was impossible. And then everybody says, yeah, I'm pretty sure that can't be done. And then you do it. And then it's like, holy cow, Stack Blitz just did that. Just, I just don't even know how you guys find the, the, the imagination to come up with like what rule you're going to break next or what impossible. It's just amazing. So listen. I think Cloudflare is similar in that way, actually. I think we look up. We all, we look I know. Up to, yeah, we look up to Cloudflare a lot. I mean, a lot of the things that Cloudflare has done, um, I mean, are in that really that same realm of you know they have they are very much leading the industry from you know an edge infrastructure perspective um so it's you know which is why i'm you know why i'm excited to be you know to be chatting with uh igor and pete here live today you know and you're uh, excited i'm yeah. excited yeah 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 no no i mean there's you know it's uh yeah anyway so looking forward to to the to whatever conversations arise here Okay, yeah. speaking of which, I think we should just stop with the introductions and freaking out and fangirling and just get into the conversation because yeah. I could go let's on all day about how excited I am, but what am I so excited <laughs> about? Let's just, let's just can, Igor, I'm just going to shut up and let you, because you're, you have something to show us and, and then e Eric also has stuff to show us if you want. Yeah. I can, you want to just kind of lay the groundwork first? Yeah, how, how about I set the context and then we, we show some demos and, and yes. go over Perfect. some of the stuff. So, the reason, um, like last time we, we spoke, we spoke a little bit about Cloudflare and why I, why I joined Cloudflare and why I was excited about Cloudflare. So let's just rewind this conversation just a little bit for setting the context. So the thing that I came to realize over the, over the last two years or so was that the possibilities on the client side uh, and building web UIs on the client side were becoming increasingly limited. And making big improvements on the client side was getting harder and harder. So I started looking into what is what would it take to bring some of the things that are necessary for building UIs on the web to the server side, but without the, the downsides of the traditional uh, server side rendering or server side approaches, where if you remember back 10 years ago, before Angular and all of these technologies, um, we used to have these round trip applications where you would just click on a link and the request would go to the server. So the server would render some UI uh, as a bunch of uh, HTML serialized as a string and would send it to the browser. The browser would then uh, render it and you would see UI with buttons and links and you would go and click on another link and say like, I want to add this thing to my shopping cart. Another request would go back to the server and the server would be like, oh, we need to add a item to the shopping cart and would do the thing uh, on the server and would generate another string and send it back to the client. Now, the problem with this approach was, it, it first of all, it worked really well for the initial internet, the way internet was designed and worked. Um, but the problem with the approach was the round trip time. The, the network latency was really killing the user experience. Every time you clicked on any of the links, you often have to wait sometimes several seconds to see the, the UI updated. 
uh, and this is why many of the many of the front end technologies have moved from the server side to the client side, where we just we went all the way in and and just moved almost all the the UI rendering logic and and logic that responds to user actions to the client side. And this worked quite well until it didn't, because people started building bigger and bigger applications, and now we have these massive JavaScript applications that are being downloaded to the, the browser. And in order for this application to even start, you have to download megabits of JavaScript in many cases. Now, we tried to do code splitting. We tried to do tree shaking. Many of these things helped quite a bit, but it, they didn't solve the fundamental problem, which is the way we architect these client-side applications today is it, it's hard to scale them, because they often end up being very monolithic, and they end up requiring a lot of JavaScript to be downloaded up front. So the, the the realization that that I had was that well maybe there's an opportunity to bring some of the stuff to the server side, and but but do it in a way that is different from the traditional server side where we had this long round trip problem, and what I realized is that edge computing can be the solution uh, that can solve this problem. Now what is edge computing? Edge computing is executing server side code very close to the client, uh, and this is what Cloudflare. Uh, has as an offering. It's a, it's a service where you can upload your program to the network, and the network deploys it to over 300 locations around the world. And as users make requests, go to a URL, this request is routed to the nearest location, which is often uh, just sort of milliseconds away. And you get you get to execute a program and <laughs> respond back with the, with the response. Now. What is this program that you, you execute? Traditionally, we had like Ruby on Rails, we had PHP, we had Java, we had .NET, all of these stacks. Uh, and that was not a solution that I was looking for, because I think in order for us to be able to scale the development of front end, we need to execute JavaScript on the server side as well, so that we can have code reuse, and you have sharing skills, and, and many of the things should be the same between the, the client side and the server side. Now, what Cloudflare has done, uh, they essentially took V8 and used the isolate model, which powers the isolation between tabs in a browser, and used it on the server side. So just like in your client-side browser, when you open tabs, V8, uh, the virtual machine that powers uh, Chrome and, and other browsers, they, it opens these like micro VMs, you can think about it, they're called isolates. And often each, um, it's slightly more complicated, but you can think about it as every tab gets a new isolate. Um, and what this does is it isolates the execution of the program between different tabs so that you don't, you don't uh, have problem with like secrets leaking between different tabs and so on. Uh, it's slightly more complicated. There are processes involved and grouping processes and so on, but that is, that is irrelevant to this conversation. The interesting thing is that with Cloudflare Workers, uh, the development platform that, that uh, we built, you can upload a JavaScript application to the network, and this application can is then deployed globally and executes as a JavaScript program. Uh, now, this is very similar to how Node.js works, but it's a little more lightweight, and it's lightweight so that we can actually scale it to, to run it globally. You don't need to think about regions with this kind of architecture. You just upload your program to the network, and it just runs, runs in the network around the world in over 300 locations. Uh, all the routing is taken care of. When you deploy things, they are deployed globally. So again, you don't need to think about regions and how to deploy to different regions. If you ever try to have a deployment with clusters and multiple regions and having to figure out how to coordinate everything, this is all gone. This is all solved. Also, because it's JavaScript, it's V8, it's very familiar. It's the same kind of VM that you use in the browser. So you can reuse the code between the client side and the server side. Um, so this is why I joined Cloudflare. I think this is super exciting technology. Uh, it's It's been powering a lot of the internet already for several years. It's quite mature technology that scales quite well and powers many of the many of the infrastructure that you use daily. Uh, very few people know that NPM, the, the registry, uses Cloudflare workers and have been using Cloudflare workers since 2018, I want to say, for quite a long time. So if this technology scales to, to use uh, with, with MPM, it can probably scale to, to the uh, needs of your application. Um, now, what we announced this year was that we 
built a CLI that allows you to build these programs for Clubland workers. This CLI is called Wrangler, and the CLI allows you to start your application, um, scaffold it, um, develop it locally, and publish it, um, and just manages the whole development workflow of this this uh, of building an application for Clubland workers. In addition to building the CLI, we partnered with Staglitz, and this is where Staglitz comes in play, where we want the CLI, we want workers to be accessible to all the developers. It should be very easy to get started. It should be very easy to experiment. And Staglitz is a perfect platform for this kind of exploration. I actually think long-term, we'll see more and more of development move into the browser. <laughs> it's Wrangler, not Wrangler. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so I actually expect that in the future we'll see more and more of the development, uh, whether it's web development or um, front end or even server development, to move into the browser. Um, but for now, Stackblitz is a perfect platform for just getting our feet wet, exploring things. And uh, for some applications, you can build them fully in Stackblitz. Now, this CLI. Uh, Wrangler CLI for, for workers that we build. It's a Node.js application. It's traditional Node.js CLI, just like Angular CLI or many of the, the tools that developers use uh, out there. And web containers, the technology that Stackblitz has, is a perfect fit for running this kind of application in a browser. So uh, we reached out to Eric and the Stackblitz folks, and, and we worked together to make sure that the Wrangler CLI worked really well in Stackblitz and allowed you to just have a single URL that you can click on. And now the development environment for Clubside workers opens in the browser. You can start writing a program, and, and you can preview it in, in the browser. Igor, yes, we want to see it. OK. Eric, would you like to take over from here? Or Somebody show I could... this to us. Just sure, too cool. sure, sure, sure. I can, yeah, I can, I can do the demo. We're sold. Um, show us how awesome. to do it. So, um, because Stackless is a instant IDE that you can crack open just by going to a URL, um, the uh, probably the fastest way to spin up a fully fledged Cloudflare workers project is you go to workers.new/slash TypeScript. Like that's uh, the the TypeScript. Uh, starter project that they have. You just go there, hit enter, and now we uh, need to wait for like at least like two seconds for this to boot up. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, exactly. So what we've got, what just happened right now is uh, it created a new project, actually spun up the Cloudflare Wrangler stack. Right, this is what you use to actually build uh, Cloudflare workers in your local environments for production grade stuff. This is the exact same CLI running here. Uh, Start up. Will you drop that link in the chat? Absolutely. Uh, listen, y'all, don't all go running off to play. Stay with us for a minute, and just <laughs> if you could just like open it in a, in, and then leave it there, but don't go away. Yeah, and actually, I'll, I'll send you the the blog post from Cloudflare where they announce this because they have um, they have a uh, a handful of ones, uh, different starter products. You can use some posting that in the chat as well. But, um, but yeah, so basically, this is this is the power of of kind of the the merger of the worlds here, where effectively you can actually build real cloud infrastructure that has the benefits that Igor was talking about, where Cloudflare, there's no there's no concept of regions, right, with Cloudflare workers, which is a beautiful thing. You're deploying the same code everywhere. Uh, you don't have to think about, is this running in, you know, US East or, you know, whatever. It's all everywhere at the same time, and, and you can spin up, you know, global infrastructure by just going to a URL and hitting enter, and a couple seconds later, you can actually be developing, right? Um, so this is like actually a pretty big deal because this you know significantly lowers the bar for what it takes to to write applications of any type that live on the internet. Like if you think about what it would take to deploy like an AWS Lambda, it's nowhere near as easy as this. Both from a how do I get my environment set up and from a uh, how hard are the APIs to use. Cloudflare workers are phenomenally simple um, to actually get up and, and get running with. So Stackwitz plus Cloudflare workers is, is kind of an amazing combo. Okay, uh, Pete, can you make that text a little bit bigger because not all yep, of us have sure. big external monitors. And just for a minute, because I just want us to slow down for a minute because some of us are seeing this for the very first time. So can we just talk for a minute about like what you could use this for? Other than just that it's cool, right? Like, like what kind of things could you use this for? 
um, for serving. And I think it's in the blog post too, but just a couple examples of what, what kind of things people are using this for. Yes. So or go, go ahead, Igor. Cloud of Workers is a general purpose uh, application pattern. So you can use it for anything you would use, for example, Node.js for or .NET um, when you're building a server for. So any kind of server that you're building, you could use Cloudflare Workers for that, whether it's a REST, um, REST API or your server-side rendering or your hosting static assets, anything that you would use Node.js, Cloudflare Workers is, is good for that. Uh, the main difference is that it's more lightweight, it's globally deployed, and uh, it's closer to the user. So the, the response, so the latency response is very low. Uh, it's just amazing. I love it. Totally. Yeah. So I mean, you can basically have like a, a CDN, instant CDN anywhere, easy, or actually running whatever you want to run. Yeah. I know a yeah. lot of people, uh, when I was consulting, there was a lot of trying to run dynamic uh, translations on the fly and just things like that, where they need to, you know, fetch this and fetch that. Very cool. Uh, I don't know if it will do Angular Nation because Angular Nation is private. Uh, are right, we ready? Hit the refresh for button questions? on the preview window, uh, Pete. Um, yeah. Yeah. But okay, go ahead. Basically, uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna work with we that one because um, stream proxy setting is set up. But I was just gonna see if I could proxy through to the uh, <laughs> to the um, Angular Nation. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, at Stackwitz, we actually use Cloudflare workers for uh, a good number of things in our infrastructure. Um, so for proxying, it's it's probably the, the fastest, lowest latency, and most cost-effective way to proxy any type of stuff. Um, we, uh, we use it for batching, like fanning out requests across CDNs and things like that. Um, like there's a lot of use cases for Cloudflare workers, actually. Um, and more and more, it's kind of eating into what you would if you if you're using like things like AWS Lambda or Google Cloud Functions or things like that, like Cloudflare workers uh, can do a lot. Like it, it tends to be a better solution, a much simpler solution for a lot of the use cases, especially ones that are not like CPU heavy. Um, that's that's typically where we end up using it in our stock. It it's so easy. It looks easy. Uh, okay, what about the cost? Is it is it going to cost a lot of money? I mean, Stackless doesn't cost money. It doesn't. Um, not today, at least. Or, I mean, you know, at least in the sense of, you know, if you're using Stackblitz, well, I, actually, so there's one thing Igor said too. So on the Stackblitz side, a lot of our usage um, it has been very much like try this out in your browser, sort of like fun stuff, um, like kind of yeah. what Igor was mentioning. And uh, so next quarter, we're going to be rolling something out that really is going to allow you to do your entire job as a web developer inside of your browser tab. Um, and so you can kind of think of, you know, uh, and, and then, and that'll actually be free unless you're like working at a gigantic company or something like that. Um, in which case this, uh, you know, your single sign on and security and all that stuff will, you know, cost money, but basically, um, you know, think about what would it look like if, you know, your entire dev environment with all of your favorite VS code extensions and et cetera, ran inside of a browser tab, you know, where you can instantly open it up. Um, that's that's we've been working for a couple of years on getting this to a point where we could do that and we're we're about there i'd say um so that's pretty exciting because it means that you'll actually be able to the coworker says hey can you review my pull request oh god i you know, right now i have to stash changes and like you know etc switch out my environment or you know if i need to go make a quick pull request something else if i want to spin up you know a new application on cloudflare workers and actually not have to clone that ever to my local machine um that stuff's that stuff's coming soon, and it's I think it's going to be a, a pretty big game changer in that regard. But so that's from the Stackwood side. That's kind of like, yeah, you know where we're heading. Okay, so uh, forgive my ignorance, but I just have a couple of questions. We'll make sure I'm on the same page. So what I use Stackbooks for at the moment is like I want to try something out. If it's something that's already kind of out there, like uh, Kendo UI component updates that may be breaking something, or I want to sort of. Uh, NGRX has a new thing or, you know, some, you know, I want to, that's what I use Stackblitz for at the moment, but it sounds like really what we're talking about is uh, we could deploy a whole app out there um, uh, using this infrastructure. So I assume there's like some, I mean, some NX commands, maybe there's a pipeline or something like that. Is that, am I on the right track here or? 
Yeah, so you in Stackblitz, you can actually now with Webpedia, you can actually install NX and run any NX command, et cetera. Um, you can run uh, package manager commands, you know, um, like MPX and things like that. So you can actually like pull in, uh, you know, mono repos. You can actually do mono repo development and pretty heavy duty stuff. And especially with some of the stuff we're going to be rolling out, it'll even more possible. Um, and to kind of give you an idea of this, so yesterday Stackblitz announced uh, Vite Conf. Um, if you're familiar with Vite, which is like a you know next generation bundling tool, it's been picked up by pretty much all the major frameworks like uh, you know, Svelte, uh, Nuxt, uh, Hydrogen, which is Shopify's React framework. Um, there's whispers of Angular. Uh, I think I think uh, Brandon uh, it, it has been working on getting it on uh, Angular on Vite. Anyway, so the short of it is the website we built for that actually we built that entirely uh, uh, effectively in, in the new version of Stackblitz that I'm kind of describing here. But that's an example of a production grade application that's dealing with server side stuff um, that is you know is being used by you know some tens of thousands of people at this point or something like that, right? Um, but I, we have been doing our job in our own product basically. And, you know, you don't need to clone it to your computer and, and that sort of thing. It's instant. Oh. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, so, uh, the, the short of it is, yeah. So like what you're using stack for today is maybe like five, five to 10% of what you'll be able to do with stack blitz, uh, a couple of months from now. So I, I could basically do development from any, anywhere using, using, uh, using this infrastructure, basically, if everything's already there, if I had a project up there and I just wanted to test it out first um, before I deployed to maybe our own sort of cloud scenario, that, that would probably be where we're, where we're headed with it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and if you have existing projects too, because like the life cycle of development, right, is, you know, as a developer, your, your day to day, you know, typically you're working on one main feature every one to four weeks or something. And, uh, you know, in between that, you know, when, as you're working on that feature, a dozen or two things come in where it's like, oh, the designer needs you to change the CSS on this thing. The PM wants this text to show instead of that one, or you need to blah, 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 fix this bug. And that means that you have to context switch. So you got to like go to your local environment, stash your changes or whatever, pull down, you know, a fresh branch, do the thing, and then, you know, put it back up, which is you know, kind of a pain and, and takes a lot of time and whatever having an environment now where you can actually say, okay, I'm just going to spin up a PR in a fresh stack, let's environment, get this thing done, make the PR, and then go back to my main environment where I'm working on that big feature every one to four weeks. Um, I think that actually seems to be like the, the biggest value that this thing's going to provide is effectively today as developers, we kind of only have a front burner in a cooking analogy. There's only one burner. It's like whatever your, your environment currently is working on for your main thing. If you need to do something else, like, on that same code base, there's no concept of like a back burner that you can spin up quickly to get something done and then spin it down. Stackblitz is is gonna is enabling you to actually be able to do that effectively. Okay, I don't know if okay. That makes sense, this is awesome. So let me ask you this. Uh, I, I want to say this was somebody already asked this. May have been buying. How much is this, man? How, like, is that still free? What are we talking about? Well, Igor just put us. Uh, uh, I looked at that that link, and for the platform pricing for the cloud player, it's like. A million requests is going to cost you like five dollars or something. Like that. I mean, it looks pretty reasonable to be honest. And honestly, Earl, it, you got to be careful because if you start using the Stackwitz Cloud for a thing to like just you know play around with it before you put it in your cloud thing, I think you might find that you like it more than your cloud thing, and then you're just <laughs> going to start using it. Um, so just be careful. I can see that. That's that that doesn't seem it. like a stretch at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just so easy. Like, how can you? It's just yeah. Developers are lazy. This is how they get us. So I think there are two conversations about pricing happening here. One is the pricing of Stackblitz uh, Cloud, which is what, what Eric was talking about. And then there's the pricing of Cloudflare Workers. Cloudflare Workers is extremely cost efficient because it's built using V8 and the, the way that the whole infrastructure is laid out. It's been built with cost uh, efficiency in mind. We actually give away 100,000 requests a day for free. So if you're building an application that has less than 100,000 requests a day, the application will run globally uh, on our infrastructure for free. If your application needs more than 100,000 requests, then uh, I shared the link with the pricing, but it's like 10 million requests cost uh, $5 or? Uh, 50 cents. 50 cents, like 50 that. cents. Oh no, sorry, 50 cents per million. Yeah. So Sandra, you can mine Bitcoin there. You just might not make a profit. 
I'm just kidding, Igor. <laughs> so it could be a development environment to where it's low. That probably would be free to nothing. And then you could host a dev environment where that is going to have requests, but it'd be, you know, minimal, really, you know. Um, and you, does that sound accurate? I think so. Yeah, and on the on the cloud or on the Stackblitz side, so the pricing on the Stackblitz side is also pretty aggressively cheap. So for like the, the hosting of the dev environment thing I was talking about, I mean, the only uh, it, you know the only time you'd be paying for that is if you're working at a big company and you know it, it basically look at kind of how GitHub does their pricing. That's probably going to like kind of what what it looks like where you can use GitHub entirely free for personal accounts uh, and even for like company accounts, um, you can use it for free in a lot of regards. Uh, and then if you, know, if you need to keep some private or you need security or single sign on or like kind of these ex, you know, features that businesses need, that's when we'll charge. And it's, and even then it's like, it's about as much as you pay for like, you know, hosting on, you know, Netlify or something like that. Right. You know, per head or something. Um, so it's really, it's, it's really not going to be an, an extremely, an extreme amount of money, even for businesses, just despite the amount of value that's being delivered with the thing. Understood. Thank you so much. Dylan. Uh, yes, hi. Um, I wanted to say that, uh, yeah, because I heard so much about Cloudflare workers on Angular Nation, I, I decided to try it out the other day. Um, I followed a you know, well done tutorial on the website and I was quickly able to make something and uh, I made an, app, an Angular application to be able to test it out. Um, what really impressed me was being able to create secrets uh, very easily. Um, so compared to my experience with AWS, um, it was very fast and, and you know, very efficient. Um, I, I, my question is um, about uh, security measures. Uh, what kind of security measures um, are, are there provided by uh, Cloudflare? And uh, what are some of the things that we'd have to watch out for when we make and deploy our applications? Uh, so Cloudflare started as a security company. Uh, security is something that is deeply ingrained in the DNA of the company. And with Cloudflare workers, security has been something that has been uh, as part of the design from the, the early days. Uh, in a big way, we leveraged the security model of V8. So V8 already has to have a lot of security uh, measures in place in order to secure your browsing experience on the web. Uh, you don't want one website to be able to peer into the other website just because you have two tabs open. Um, in a similar way, we, we use uh, this um, VM isolation technology to separate the applications from each other uh, and provide a separate contexts in which they, they execute. Um, additionally, when we talked about secrets, a lot of the stuff that, that is uh, stored and our network is, uh, is encrypted. Um, and then we provide guidance to developers on how to build secure applications. Do you have any concrete questions or something that very specific that you would like to know about? Uh, no, nothing specific. Uh, no, that, that was very good information that you provided. Uh, I, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to look, you know, into the documentation further. And um, uh, But anyway, I'm really impressed because uh, what happened is that before I tried to do something similar, and I actually postponed, you know, working on the rest of my application because, you know, all the stuff around AWS was uh, actually prohibiting me because of the, the DevOps uh, overhead. So, yeah, it's really impressive. And now you're really no longer prohibited? Exactly. That's right. Hey. <laughs> the floodgates have been opened, yes. Hey. Awesome. Lord, help us now. We've created a monster. Um. Keep <laughs> us posted. Do take a look at the link I just put in the chat, which is like uh, there's a massive long uh, post in our docs about the security model for the workers. Um, security is definitely something that Cloudflare takes really, really seriously and has very, very strong um, experts in. So it looks like documentation is also something that they take seriously because every time we ask you all a question, you just go link to the docs. Here you go. It's all right there. That's pretty cool. Well, well, thank you very much. Yeah, I'll definitely take a look at that. You're welcome. Any more questions? So one of the cool things I like about this combination of Cloudflare and Stackblitz is that both both are trying to achieve a similar kind of, not goal, but like a similar kind of principle, which is to remove complexity from developers' lives. You know, we're at Cloudflare, we're trying to remove this concern about DevOps because uh, it's really difficult to do it right. And 
and to make it scale and to make it secure. And that's just all handled for you. So you don't have to think about it as a developer. You can focus on your business. And similarly with Stackblitz, they're taking away the complexity of setting up development environments, making sure that uh, you can collaborate easily with your colleagues without having to set up complex uh, systems yourself. And like these are these are two really complementary uh, aspects, which uh, I think are the way that the whole industry is moving. It's just that I think all of you, the way that you approach problems and Igor and Pete and Eric and all like all of you is like by the time we hear about it and it's so cool and we're just scratching our heads going could that actually work and then here's Eric going let me show you <laughs> like it's let's just look at it right now and see if it works and it's just like wow I can't believe you just did that it's really fun really fun so I want to see more uh demos of this I want to see because here's the thing that blows my mind Sometimes I think, and but I mean, I it, it doesn't bother me. It's just kind of funny for me because uh, sometimes I'm watching out here and I'm watching Twitter, I'm watching social media, and the thing, and even the things that I post on Angular Nation. Some things people get all excited about, and some things people don't pay attention. And this is one of those things. Like I cannot believe that more people are not freaking out about this. And I think, but it's like Angular because people were not paying attention in the beginning to Angular either. And they were like, oh, that's, you know, they're not. and then all of a sudden it's cool. And I think the same thing is going to happen with this. It's like, nobody's going to pay attention. And all of a sudden it's going to be like everywhere. That's my prediction. And but do, do you know what, what's really cool about this? Is that it's really JavaScript and the web that unites us all. Because what, what Web Containers is doing, it allows you to take Node.js applications and run them in the browser. And what Cloudflare Workers is doing is, Taking all of the stuff you have in the browser running today and allowing you to, to run that on the on the on the server side in the Cloudflare workers. Uh, so, if it weren't for these technologies, fundamental web technologies, we would not be able to do many of these things. But it's the interoperability, interoperability between uh, the, the APIs and the the code and language that allows us to just leverage a lot of the ecosystem that has been built and use it in different contexts. And there's another thing that I think and it's funny Sander's raising his hand because I was about to pull Sander into the conversation because something that I've really noticed um, just from years of, of doing because I started out like everybody else as a junior developer I didn't know what I was doing and learning and learning and learning and then you go into these bigger and bigger applications and you get into enterprise and as all of and all of the apps right no matter how great you are at your job like as the apps get bigger and bigger and bigger they all get more and more complicated. And then the complexity gets worse and worse. It just gets bigger and bigger and more and more and more complex. And then, and, and, and it's been such a great opportunity to, to know all of the experts and travel with all these super smart people for the last couple of years. Because one thing that I've learned from hanging out with these guys from Igor and Pete and Eric and, and Sonder is, this is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons Sonder and I get along so well, is because when you go up to the enterprise architect level and you get this complexity that gets more and more and more complex at some point the only answer is to make it simple again and this is what these guys are so good at and so when you have these mass because igor and i talked to i don't know it was like a year ago about like the biggest problems that angular developers are struggling with and especially like big companies right because i was doing architect training and i wanted to cover everything and this is the thing that igor said which was also my experience is the thing that everybody's struggling with is these massive applications. And so at some point you have to start breaking that down and make, and like, but how do we break up a massive application when it's all dynamic and there's all these pieces that depend on each other. And it's like, this is very complicated to do. And then to, to take all that complexity and make it so simple. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. Like, I don't know if people know how beautiful this is in the complexity and the simplicity and just, it just, Beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm sorry. I'm nerding again. No, it is. It is. On, oh, good go ahead, Sander. Well, um, I really love the, the whole Cloudflare workers. I've been toying with it for a while already, for a long while, actually. And it's um, ready for use in production. Like, it's being used in production. This is not like a beta thing. No, right? no. This is like ready. It works. No, this is ready and, and it works. Uh, and I think something that people are missing is how are you going to hook up your APIs? Is your backend database server going to hit badly? I think this needs some explanation from 
one of you guys. Yeah. yeah do we like, can we just like not have back end teams anymore? <laughs> Well, probably no. we, we have to store our data somewhere. <laughs> no, so. we'll store it in the cloud. Yeah, I'm just kidding. No, I, I'm I'm just kidding. Backend developers, I'm just kidding. I love you. <laughs> yeah. So when it comes to data, um, this is actually a very very important thing that you're bringing up, Sander, um, because just having a compute at the edge is not very useful because there's only so much you can do if you can't access data at the edge, uh, and this is why the the Cloudflare workers platform is, is interesting because it's not just a compute. We also have a KV store, which allows us to globally store simple uh, key value data uh, that is replicated globally and accessible from, from all of the edge locations. And additionally, um, we have several other storage products, including um, D1, which is a SQL light database. Uh, this is something that we announced just two months ago, I think, uh, as, a, as a beta. Um, and that allows you to have a SQL storage accessible from the edge. Additionally, we have durable objects, which is, you can think of it as an as a object instance that lives in the network. Uh, and you can talk to it, allows you to do all of the concurrent and concurrency and durability uh, operations. It's very low level. So it's it's not something that all developers will want to use, but in in many cases, when you need a low-level data storage API that is globally accessible, uh, durable objects are perfect choice for that. Cool. And That's but, amazing. But yeah. but of course, uh, you know, you don't need to use only database options or storage option options from Cloudflare. Um, Many developers are successful using Superbase and many, many other storage options uh, in combination with Cloudflare workers. OK. And in case I want to, uh, I have a customer that wants to run their database on-prem. Um, mm -hmm. Is that possible also? It is possible. Uh, we are working on making this much simpler than it is today. It is possible. You would uh, typically have to write uh, a server or find a way to connect to uh, that on-prem database. So either have an in-between layer that you can talk to, uh, expose it as a GraphQL uh, endpoint or REST endpoint, or have other way of connecting to the database. Wouldn't it be slower on-prem? <laughs> It depends on the location. So again, you have to think about regionless global deployment. What that means is if your database is in New York and your clients are in Asia and your compute is running in Asia, you will uh, your compute will need to make calls to, to New York, which can be uh, problematic. However, everything is happening within the Cloudflare network. So you're already getting benefit of very low latency calls um, within, within the network. Um, I think. I'm trying to think how much I can talk about all of this stuff, but we're working on exciting stuff that that will make uh, make interesting choices or good choices about where the compute should run um, in in relationship to the the database or data that it's accessing. So there's a lot of stuff that is in works uh, and will be announced in the upcoming uh, upcoming months and quarters. Igor, can you give us a hint? No. Can you give it? Can you give it? Like, can you get? Can you like tell us anything about what? Can you tell us something that you can't do right now that you wish you could do? Um, I think so. The the thing that makes me very interested in and the thing that I'm actively exploring is, um, I'm unhappy with the module federation and just the overall approach to micro front ends um, that, that most developers use today. And I think a platform like Cloudflare Workers has a lot to offer where we can um, free a lot of the work that needs to currently happen on the client side and move it to the server side, move it to the edge where micro front ends can be stitched together uh, at the edge and presented in very fast way, and, and they give you all of the benefits of micro front ends without the downsides of um, having to download a lot of code up front or having very complicated to deployment uh, and release processes. It's amazing. Good times. Uh, I I I hope. 
that it's going to be okay with you guys for us to just have you back periodically because I think you're always going to be working on cool stuff and we're always going to be just stalking you and be like, what are you doing now, Igor? Eric, what's going on over there? Uh, Sander, go ahead. Well, I have another question. So all this Cloudflare um, JavaScript containers is all open source, uh, isn't it? Or not entirely? Not, not yet. Uh, we did announce that we are open sourcing Cloudflare Workers runtime, and the the plan for that is I don't know if we made a public commitment, but it's coming this year. So, that cool. so that basically means I can run it on my own Kubernetes cluster. Yes. Oh, yes. you made me just so happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> more importantly for for us, or at least uh, me and Pete. We really want to provide local development experience that completely matches what you run in the network so you can easily debug issues or just have the developing experience that you're currently used to. And for that, we do need the runtime to be able to, to run locally. And this is this is the, the reason why I'm excited about uh, the decision to open source the runtime. Yeah, yeah. I'm currently working on a project that needs um, a better BFF. I probably you probably have heard the term BFF backend for front end. Mm -hmm. And I think uh Cloudflare workers or at least this this stack would be ideal for that. But uh, in this enterprise case, I cannot use like public thing for that. It needs to mm -hmm. also run on prem because if it doesn't run on prem, <laughs> it has to do with security and, and all kinds of mm -hmm. other things. So it's cool that it's coming along. Yeah, awesome. Eris Divis. Hi, all. How are Hello. You? How are you doing, Eris? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, a particular question about uh, CDN hosting. Um, if we if we use CDN hosting in our company website, uh, and uh, right now we're also using inside our website uh, an API from Cloudflare to get uh, the country of the client. Mm -hmm. So we're writing actually the Fed's code. We're writing it inside our website. Would it make sense to write this code inside the web, inside the Cloudflare Worker, for example? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And actually, that was that was the use case how that that inspired the the start of the project. So Cloudflare Workers as a project started in around 2015. So that's quite a few years ago, and the main goal there was. Historically, CDNs have been very static. So you could do a lot of, you could upload a lot of assets and, and deploy them, them globally, insert them globally. But it was very difficult to do any kind of dynamic behavior. Um, there were various extensions and, and proprietary features that many CDN vendors added to their CDNs, but it was not possible to run arbitrary code. And the reason why Workers as a Platform started was to enable execution of arbitrary user-provided code at the edge of the CDN as a, as a way to make the CDN a little more dynamic. So the use case you are talking about where uh, th there is a need to know the country or the location of the user and, and augment the response, that was essentially the, the initial use case where requests were flowing through workers and workers were a proxy uh, or still are. You can still use them in that way and many people are using them in that way. but what what I'm excited about and what I'm what I'm what I'm working on is making sure that you can actually deploy the application to the network and use the workers as technology as the origin as where the application is producing the responses, not just something that augments responses coming from from another place. Thank you for having me. This has been thank fun. Yeah, thank you everyone. Thanks thank for you. the questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, thanks guys. Appreciate it.